All right, everyone. We got a lot to talk about with Callus. Many weapons have been tested. Exotics, power weapons, all sorts of primary weapons. So today is hopefully the day we can determine some optimal loadouts for damage when fighting Callus. If you don't care remotely about any of the math behind anything, and you just want the answers, go to the time on the screen. But first, before we can damage Callus, we must understand Callus. Unfortunately, I still don't fully understand it, but we're gonna talk about what I do understand. Force of Will is the stacking buff that allows you to do more damage to Callus. It's part of the encounter. Once you get past a certain point, about 30 skulls, each individual skull starts to increase your damage a little bit. And it seems like the higher your stacks are, the larger of a benefit that you get. That seems pretty obvious, but there didn't appear to be a fully consistent pattern. Of the tests I was able to get my clan to help me with, we got to try out 15 different stack amounts with everyone using different weapons. In my case, I was using a Mida at 305. We can see the results here of body shot damage and how it scales up, and it's a little weird. Going from 45 to 50, for example, it's consistent, a 20 damage bump per skull. But then when you expect it to be a larger bump, like from 69 to 70 or from 79 to 80, it's still a 20 damage bump. Crits seemed to scale at about the same rate. With a fully completed data set, I'm sure we'd be able to see where the true bumps in damage can come from, but I can only test so much before my friends want to kill me. Anyway, that's a very little amount on how the damage ramp up works, so let's start getting to the data. There were a lot of weapons to test because this damage phase lasts long enough that you're able to drain your power ammo or whatever ammo and still have time to do damage. Among the exotics we tested were Merciless, Sweet Business, Borealis, Darcy, Coldheart, Vigilance Wing, and believe it or not, Hard Light. Among the legendary weapons were a lot, a lot of weapons. A very popular setup right now is Cold Heart plus a Cluster Bomb Rocket, like the Raid Rocket or Curtain Call, so naturally that's the first thing I wanted to look at. I'm going to use Raid Rocket and Curtain Call interchangeably during the video. When I say one, I mean both. This fight was not as simple to test for compared to any other boss fight I've ever done. There are a lot of variables. For the purposes of keeping things as consistent as possible, my team got a 70 to 73 force of will stack of buffs, while not using Empowering Rift. But we did use Rally Barricade a whole bunch, and I'll mention specifically when it is used. Turns out trying to hit 70 on every single attempt is really time consuming. So, while the tests you'll see here are based in that range, that doesn't mean that at higher or lower stacks that things will be the exact same. I would suspect that most things will be approximately the same across most values, but I can't guarantee this. To check for every value for every weapon would take many, many hours of testing. Some of my clanmates also had on various mods, like reload speed mods. While those are unfortunate side effects, extra variables, I do not believe that they will make a significant impact, and if there is a time that they might, I will mention it. Something I was not able to account for was whenever the boss staggered. When you do a lot of damage to Callus, he's going to stagger. Sometimes he staggers one time, sometimes two times. This screws with timings and with damage. Sometimes Callus will do his big bomb attack earlier than you thought. Sometimes it'll happen later. Then sometimes we do too well and we bring him into robot mode, and that also affects timings in a weird way. So just keep all that in mind. There's a lot of variables and this is not going to be an exact science like Vosik was or Axis or Atheon. On to Cold Heart and Curtain Call. Since this combo is probably the most popular right now, I wanted to do a couple of extra tests on them. With Cold Heart being built the way that it is, it is very hard to simulate damage like I can with other weapons. Its damage grows the longer you hold down the trigger, and even though each damage tick equals one bullet from the gun, counting damage numbers individually is incredibly difficult. So with Cold Heart, we did a lot of tests to test for as many scenarios as possible. One magazine, four magazines, four plates with no barricade, one plate with barricade, and three plates with barricade. 
We have this chart showing all the different combinations of the cold heart damage examples that I just said. These are all real world tests, no simulations. We can see some slight differences per example early on. It's pretty consistent. 70 and 71 stacks are really close for the most part. And any major differences come from how good of a player you are with your aim. Then, when we incorporate Rally Barricade into the mix, we really start to see the huge benefits on this encounter using Rally Barricade. For example, we end up doing more damage with Barricade using only three plates compared to without using all four plates. However, we have two of the same tests with one of them falling 70,000 damage behind. What happened there? Well, a side-by-side -side look shows that they mostly line up together in terms of when we move and when we're dealing damage. But if I just look at damage uptime, if we only add the parts during which I'm actually shooting, in the 70 stack example, I have 1.5 seconds more uptime. 1.5 seconds is about 22 ticks, which can be around 28,000 damage. Another part of it is my aiming or my timing. In the 69 stack, my aim was not as good and I didn't get through as many shots. There's also the fact that 69 stacks is indeed less than 70, so our buff isn't as strong and all of that missed damage adds up. It's not a lot, but it will add up. If we take all of those missed opportunities, that 480,000 number is actually looking more like a 515 or 520. For the purposes of this video, we'll take that number and roll with it. About 520,000 damage across three plates. But I am aware of the fact that it's not the most exact science. So why do we bother with only three plates? Why not all four? Well, let's take our pretty solid but maybe slightly low 520,000 damage run. Divide that by three if we just want to do this quickly, since Cold Heart can avoid most range penalties if you're towards the front of the plate, and we're sitting at about 173,000 damage per plate on average. Pretty good. However, power weapons are capable of more damage in one plate, and generally speaking, if you're capable of doing more than something like Cold Heart in one plate, you should do that. The Raid Rocket or Curtain Call are two of those weapons that can fulfill that requirement. However, the only way that they do that is by using Rally Barricade. Crouch, shoot, crouch, shoot. If we don't burn all of our ammo on that first plate, then we're not really doing significantly better than just using Cold Heart. As everyone who has used a Cluster Bomb rocket knows, when the Cluster Bombs stack nicely, it means a lot of extra damage. But when they don't, it's kind of lackluster. We wanted to see if hitting Callus in a certain part of his body affected Cluster Bomb stacking. First, we aimed for his chest. At 73 stacks, a little high, our damage ranged from 35 to 50,000 damage per rocket. Then we aimed for his no-no uh, zone over there at 70 stacks. The damage here was also all over the place, ranging from as low as 39,000 to as high as 60,000. There is a bit of inconsistency here from if your cluster bombs land nicely packed, if the boss moves, and to where you actually aim your rocket. When we tried six rockets on the first plate at 71 stacks, we had quite the range from 277 to 318,000 damage. That 165 that you're seeing was with five rockets, possibly with one of them missing, and my 347 was with seven rockets, accidentally. I tried again with six rockets fired and only ended up with 248,000. If I were to try to pin an average damage amount on six cluster bomb rockets, I would say it's probably about 270 to 280,000. But again, the variance is stupidly high. Our cluster bomb plus cold heart hypothetical average at 70-ish stacks is going to be 275,000 plus 520,000. That gets us 795,000. If we take our best examples and test runs and just smash them together, then we're looking at well over 850,000, 866 and change. Is that a smart idea to do, though? For the purposes of this video, probably not, but I figured someone wants some sort of a number. So the first thing we're going to do to see if we can break this Cold Heart plus Cluster Bomb rocket powerhouse of a combination, we're going to look at potential power weapons to see if anything is going to beat out Curtain Call on its own for the one plate championship damage belt. 
Two weapons that come to mind are Ward Cliff Coil and Merciless. So let's look at those. Ward Cliff is up first. We have a 73 stack, a little high, ready to go. Rockets out. What do we get? Well, it's, it's not fantastic. We have 33, 38, 42, and 43,000 damage per rocket, which does loosely match Curtain Call, but we also had a 73 stack, kind of high. And Curtain Call has a lot of variants. Okay, how about five rockets? All of our reserves. Again, 73 stacks. Fire off five rockets. And yeah, we, we end with some similar results. 168, 180, 143, and 134,000 damage. We don't get too much time to deal any damage afterwards. There's some time, depending on how quick you were. But in a pure one-to-one -one comparison... The point is going to go to Curtain Call or the Raid Rocket in my book. Merciless is up next. The Fusion Rifle Beast that just ramps up in speed. Let's look at some numbers. At 71 stacks on the front plate, do not bother with Merciless on the back plates, we're looking at about 15 to 16,000 damage per shot. Range is a little finicky here, so get close to the edge of the plate if you can. Our 73 stacks were a little bit higher at 17 to 18,000. Now, with the Rally Barricade... We are more than capable of firing off all 14 of our shots with Merciless. And if you do manage to bring Callus to robot form, you will have time to shoot your guns as well. For the purposes of this example, we're not going to bring Callus into robot mode since we basically don't do it in any other example. 15 to 16,000 per shot is 210 to 225,000 damage total with 14 shots. And Curtain Call is definitely going to top that, so forget it. But wait a minute! If we take a closer look, we can see that Merciless is indeed getting a 2x damage boost when beams hit Callus's head. That means we're capable of two times the damage we're dealing now with Merciless. If half of our total beams from Merciless hit Callus in the head, we're now looking at about 330,000 damage or so on a 71 stack. If you hit more, you're doing even better. And that is going to give Curtain Call a definite run for its money. Not to mention some non-damage benefits to Merciless. One, you can't blow yourself up with it. Two, you don't need to do as much crouch spam. Three, you're not going to have huge frame drops. And four, I personally think it's a little bit better than a rocket for the throne room, but that's going to be subjective. So can we call Merciless the power weapon champion? I think you could, reasonably speaking, as long as you aim for the head and you're accurate. But, if we can't find anything to dethrone Coldheart, it's right back to Curtain Call. We did take a look at grenade launchers, but they were well below Merciless and the Raid Rocket. And we want to spare you the details of all of those, so we can just move on. How about Snipers, the Destiny 1 reigning champions? Turns out that yes, Snipers are very much a contender in the power weapon slot for damage. However, there are two issues with using a Sniper. Speed and accuracy. Mainly, how quickly can you land headshots? When utilizing Rally Barricade, myself and my teams averaged about 12 shots fired on the first plate using slow rate of fire snipers going as fast but as accurately as possible. Gentleman Vagabond, The Long Walk, and Borealis are some snipers that we used. Borealis gets a huge bonus for having 5 in the mag instead of 3, reducing the amount of times that you're going to need to crouch. At 71 stacks, a headshot from one of those snipers is doing 31,094 damage. If we're capable of firing 12 shots and hitting every single headshot, that's 373,128 damage. That definitely beats Curtain Call, and on average, that's gonna beat Merciless, or at least be really, really, really close. But during testing, on average, we only hit about 9 to 10 headshots out of those 12 total. That drops our damage down to 298 to 323,000, including the non-crits. What that all means is, if you're really good with a sniper, and you're hitting your headshots, it'll be as good or better than a cluster rocket. But if you're not, or you go too slowly, then it probably won't be. We did test a variety of snipers as well, Darcy, Eye of Foresight, but you need to fire them so quickly that it doesn't seem worth the effort. Perhaps those on PC will have an easier time with it, but even then, I feel like the high-impact snipers are probably going to be a better choice. 
Is there anything stopping you from using a sniper, rocket, or linear fusion on the back plates? Absolutely not. And in fact, it might be more beneficial to use them on the back plates so that if you're using any weapons that have range penalties, you can utilize them on the front plates. And no, I totally didn't just think of that having already done all of my tests. F Linear fusions were making some noise in my clan recently, so we're going to take a look at those next. I used the tarantula at 71 stacks. Without a barricade, we got off six shots, but with one, we can get in about nine or ten if we get some staggers to go our way. At 33,982 damage a shot, with no barricade, we are well short of any sort of previous benchmarks. And with a simulated barricade, we just barely keep up. Nine shots getting us about 306,000 damage, and ten getting us 339,820 damage. Linear fusions are able to compete, for sure, but only if you can keep up a very high uptime and only if you can hit your crits, much like snipers. So, it looks like cluster rockets aren't the only good choice for the power slot. Merciless, snipers, and linear fusions all compete very well and can very much beat cluster rockets on one plate and are way better than rockets if you don't have a barricade but we still need a cold heart challenger. That challenger is going to be sweet business, but also, and this really surprised me, almost the entire auto rifle class in general is also a challenger. Sweet business. It's pretty close to cold heart. It's pretty similar. Both fire a lot of rounds really quickly. During a lot of these tests, I have on the Titan exotic Actium War Rig, which slowly puts shots back into your gun from your reserves. However, with a Rally Barricade, you can have pretty much the same exact effect. You'll just need to crouch one time. But if you're lacking Barricades, War Rig, put it on. Sweet Business has 450 rounds available at max capacity, and we are going to use every single one. Let's break down an example. On the first plate, we're dealing 48.50 per crit, and we burn 123 bullets, losing some time to deploy a Barricade. Second plate, 172 bullets, losing some time because of a loss of a barricade, but only a few shots, hitting 1358 on a crit once we move up on the plate. Then we burn the last of our 153 bullets, right as we transition into the final plate with crits of 1334. If, hypothetically, we hit every single crit in that example, we are over 600,000 damage in three plates. Unfortunately, we are not an aim god, and this real-world test nets us 535,000 damage. We did 548,000 with Cold Heart one time, so game over, right? Well, not if we look at the uptime between the two. On the 548,000 damage run of Cold Heart, we had about 40.25 seconds of uptime, time that we spent actively shooting the boss. With that sweet business example, 32 seconds. Despite eight fewer seconds being spent dealing damage, we not only kept up with Cold Heart total damage, we can beat it too. So, Sweet Business wins. Well, yes and no. Sweet Business's main issue is that it can only hold 450 shots, so if you're ripping through bullets quickly, you're going to need a replacement. This isn't as big of a deal as I'm making it seem, since Sweet Business's damage is already really good. But if you keep watching, I'll tell you a great follow-up option. So, if we take those uptimes, that 40.25 and those 32 seconds, and we divide them into our total damage, Sweet Business ends up about 3,000 DPS ahead of Cold Heart in those examples. It takes 6.73 seconds to use a full mag of Cold Heart, and only 0.5 seconds more for Sweet Business, and both take approximately the same time to reload and start firing again. Cold Heart has to deal with a somewhat hefty ramp up period before it starts to reach maximum damage, whereas Sweet Business's ramp up is much shorter and has higher crit damage per bullet, at least on Callus. I don't think there's any way that I can say that Sweet Business isn't the better choice for three plates worth of damage, especially if you're able to pick up a brick of ammo when transitioning to another plate. But, either way, you're going to need a Legendary in your power slot, so you're right back to Curtain Call or a Sniper. 
As for primary archetypes, hand cannons, scouts, pulses, and autos, we did a series of tests without Rally Barricade. And believe it or not, auto rifles kicked the crap out of all the others. However, I did not get to test all of those kinds of weapons with barricades for this video. Since auto rifles won so dominantly, I'm under the assumption for this video that even with barricades, autos will still win big time over the other three. But I cannot confirm it as true just yet, so I can't wait for someone else to make a video saying how wrong I am for assuming this. But still, auto rifles are here, they are back, and they are DPS champions. Ghost Primus from the raid, Scathelock, Origin Story, and what may become my new best friend, The Number from Future War Cult. Feel free to throw Uriel's gift in there as well. Without a rally barricade, you're going to average about two magazines of ammo per plate. Eight magazines total, maybe a smidge more depending on timing, and that goes for basically every auto rifle. With a rally barricade, you're going to average three magazines, 12 magazines total, if you have a rally barricade for every single plate, and again, maybe a smidge more depending on timing. So let's look at some examples and some simulations. Here's Ghost Primus being tested with a Rally Barricade at 71 stacks. 171, 173, 172, and 191. 190,940,000 ,940 damage. My result of 173,000 also includes me dropping a Barricade for the team, so I missed a second or two of damage. Now, if we were to simulate that 191,000 into a perfect crit streak with no misses and no body shots. Liger fired 140 shots on that plate in just under 14 seconds, 13.833. At 1723 damage per crit, that would be 241,220 damage if you were perfect, not including a perk on the weapon that increases your damage at the end of a magazine. So that number is actually a tad bit higher. Let me hit you with something else. The number from Future War Cult at 71 stacks. If we swapped the number into the same position as Ghost Primus on that previous run, same amount of time, 13.833 seconds, Liger would have fired 107 rounds at 2446 damage per round on a headshot. That's 261,722 damage simulated, and again, not including the damage ramp up perk that the number has. Even still, if we were to approximate a real-world example of the number being used in the same efficiency as Liger did with Ghost Primus, that's over 200,000 damage on a single plate with an energy weapon. How does that compare to Sweet Business? Well, let's simulate Sweet Business in the same condition. 13.833 seconds of firing is 197 shots, including the ramp-up time, 71 stacks at 14.58 a crit on the front plate. That would be 287,226 damage simulated, which does beat Ghost Primus and the number. Considering how easy it is to control all of the weapons listed here, I have a feeling that if all things were equal, Sweet Business would end up winning while it has ammo, obviously. I'm sorry, but we're still not done. I know you want to punch me in the mouth right now, I know. The last thing we need to look at are combinations of weapons to see what is going to get us the most amount of damage across all plates combined. Unfortunately, without a lot of examples and a lot of averages, it's going to be tough to draw a conclusion. I can't just directly plug and play these results. Because, example, on this one I only got 9 seconds, but then maybe on this phase I got 13 seconds, but then I got a different this and I got a different that. Yada yada. Again. There are so many factors at play that trying to figure out if one combo is better than the other is going to rely on so many things. How many barricades do you have? Did the boss stagger enough times? Did he do something late or early? Are you hitting your shots? Are you at the back or front of the plate itself to negate range penalties? But after trying to smash together some results like some weird Frankenstein abomination of a spreadsheet, based on data that probably shouldn't be put together to try to come to any sort of conclusion, I can give you something at 71 stacks. And here it is on the screen. So, 
Do you need to use Cold Heart on Callus? Is it really the best thing? You can if you want. It's good. But you should know that other options are available. Sweet Business and a Sniper. Merciless and Double Auto Rifles. Although we didn't get to test any Vice Auto Rifles. There's a chance that those are maybe even better. I just don't know. I didn't get to test it. Then you have Cold Heart and a Sniper. Or the Rocket. A Classic. The caveat with using a sniper, again, is that when using a high impact one, you need to get quite a few crits in order to break even with something like Merciless or even Cluster Rockets. If you're a slow shot, then it might not be worth it and I'd probably stay away from snipers. In the end, if you're the kind of group that is one cycling callus in the first place, any combinations of the weapons mentioned here are going to work out just fine. There didn't appear to be a combination of weapons that was several hundreds of thousands of damage points ahead of any other combination, but that doesn't mean there couldn't be. There could have been something that we didn't test, or maybe didn't test well enough, and it could surprise us. There are so many variables at play that it's tough to come to a full conclusion like we could in the past. And again, we only tested around the 70 to 73 stack mark, and things could be radically different with higher stacks. The thing that surprised me the most, besides the patience of my clan, who helped me with all of this, was the auto rifle class in its entirety. We're so used to auto rifles being an afterthought in all aspects of play, especially in the end game, at least in Destiny 1, and here they are, turning out to be some of the best weapons in the game for Kallus, and maybe even some of the best weapons in the game in general. Me personally, I'll be rocking double autos and merciless because I find it insanely fun and satisfying, but I'm sure I'll switch it up every now and then. That is what I have for you guys on callous damage comparisons. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating would be pretty nice. Sorry about the ads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.